This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. As always, we're here with the Ramble, and we'll be here until midnight, as always, uh, Eastern Daylight Time. And a little bit later, we'll go to our citizens panel and talk about the stuff that's been going on today. It just keeps, it's the administration that just keeps on giving. But in the meantime, why don't we leave this world and go to the world of somebody we know and love? Okay, here's what we do every time we ever call Stephen Pearl. We, uh, first of all, we go over to our, our dialing up thing here. It's called Skype. And then we call him. And then he always says something weird at the beginning. So we, we, we don't want to, you know, ruin that. Hold on. Why isn't it, uh, why is it, oh, there we go. Okay. All right. For sale. A thousand and one Bafo Anthony Scaramucci jokes. Guaranteed to kill if he gets his job back again. Axing 13 cents or best offer. Call obsolete <laughs> 7 300 and ask for my secretary, Miss Buxom. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I just thought the folks would enjoy that. I, I, I think they did enjoy that. Hello, Stephen Pearl. How are you? Hello, Alex Bannon. How are you? How's everything in the big oh, bad I'm apple? okay. I was having all kinds of technical difficulties, so I said, fuck it, and I just went to another... Fucking mother. machinery. Yeah. That Obama's fault. Yeah. Yeah. So how you doing? Good. Sitting here on the carpet with one of our cats, old Muddy Waters here, and we're just... Uh, Chilling out and talking to an old friend. What be up? You have a cat named Muddy Waters? We have three cats, and one of them is named Muddy Waters. Is an older black cat with, like, speckles of gray. Yeah. And uh, he got a slow saunter, but he can be fast if he wants to. And they, uh, the word is he sired several of the cats outside. What can we call him but Muddy Waters? Right, that's he kind of charmed his way into our hearts and into our home. Now, uh, now what, do, you, do you say you have two other cats? Yeah, we have a little Sam and a little Nishi. There were two ferals we got in our place, and we lived in Walnut Creek uh, about five years ago, and we have them, and then Muddy Waters came along, and now we got three. Let's see, Nishi is a black cat, right? No, Muddy Waters is the black cat. Nishi and Siam are brothers from, uh, I think they had separate fathers with the same mother. I think that's what the vet told us, and uh, I think they're Siamese or something. I don't know. I don't know shit about cats. I just know they're little sweethearts. They're cool. Oh. I'm more, I was more of a dog person, but cats are cool, too. Well, cat, big if, animals. If you get the right cat, you know, you're, you're in good shape. Yeah, well, and Siamese, I always go with Siamese because they have the best nature. You know, they're, they're a lot like dogs. They're very loving and, you know. They, yeah, yeah. These these are really affectionate guys. It took the it took the two of them, Nishi and Sam, like about a year before they stopped running away from us and hiding under the couch. But they warmed up to us, and now they you know they 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 let us know when they want something. Well, so, you know, uh, uh, they're good little guys. Well, we've had a sad thing here. We we were babysitting cats, a cat, a cat. Uh huh. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, a cat. A, a cat. And uh, we 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 met these people out of Fire Island, and then this woman who. Uh, we really liked. She was saying that uh, they get, they have to go to Germany because he's they're doing a documentary on her her boyfriend, and uh, she she the woman who was supposed to take care of the cat, come over twice a day and feed it, uh, suddenly was unavailable. She didn't know what to do, and we oh. said, well, well, then of course my wife said we'll do it, and uh, uh -huh. I went okay that uh, yeah sure we'll do it. And she, I said, you're going to go over there twice a day to feed the damn cat? She says, well, it's, if that's what's got to be done. That's, I said, why don't we just have them bring the cat here? We'll put screens in the window so the cat doesn't commit suicide. There you go. You don't want that. Yeah. You don't want a jumper. And, and uh, we're, we'll, uh, you know, we'll take care of the cat here. Plus, the cat will have, you know, affection and love 24-7 because I'm here during the day. Sure. She comes home at night. You know, the cat's going to. There you go. So they bring the cat over. And, of course, the first night, we can't find the cat. I think we finally found her hiding behind the door. <laughs> so when we... When oh, we, yeah, they're great at hiding. They're so we hiding. went, okay, fine, sit behind the door. 
We walked away. We came back a little bit later. She wasn't behind the door because we had found her, right? Uh-huh. So then I looked, and she was behind the washing machine. And when I noticed that, she finally gave up, you know. And then she, all of a sudden, we see the cat, you know. Uh-huh. And she's not, she's not, you know. And it took about a day before that cat just warmed her way into our heart. Oh, yeah, sure. You know. And, and it was inc- sure. it was incredible. It was just absolutely incredible. And we fell in love with this animal. And, um, you know, I mean, she was just, she was, it wasn't that she was loving particularly, but she was just very bright and smart. And, yeah, and, and all That's those a good kind- presence, good energy. Yeah. And the thing that I loved about it, because I like cats and stuff, is that during the day uh, when I'm here, I wasn't alone. You know, I had this there you this, go. this uh, presence, you know, who would constantly let me know, you know, that she was there, right? Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, since we have this place, there's a lot of rooms. She had to she had to actually get into every room and inspect it just to make sure. And I wasn't letting yeah. her into the <laughs> I wasn't letting her, letting her into the studio because, uh, you know, there's a lot of wires here and stuff. And you know, if I'm working, right. she, she yeah, yeah. they always like to step on keyboards and and crap like that. And she would just sit yeah. out that door, man, outside that door while I was in here. Just and when I get out, uh-huh. she she'd look at me like I can't come in there, you know. Finally, one night uh-huh. I had the door not open, but I didn't have it shut. And I hear this pounding, and she's pounding on the door until it opens, and then she walks right in, and it's hers now, you know. Uh-huh. I mean, so I mean, we fell uh-huh. in love with this cat, and then of course, ten days sure. later, the people come back and they come get their cat. Yeah, and uh-huh. we felt this. I don't know, it's separation anxiety sure. that was amazing because we'd so come sure. to love this cat. We And we took like 50, oh, sure. 50 pictures of her and all of that. So animals oh, can... Oh, sure, if you're an animal lover, with, you know, and any, any animal comes into your life, you want to keep it forever. Yeah. And, and uh, um, well, if you're not an animal lover, they work harder at making you happy, you know? Uh, cause oh, sure, you, sure. You, you ever have people come in the house <laughs> and they don't like cats and the first place they sit is in that person's lap? You know, sure. <laughs> I've had that happen. I was never a big cat person, and then uh, I just became an all-around animal lover. And then uh, these guys are wonderful. Well, when I, I wouldn't up, trade them for a thousand beagles. When I grew up in Marin, we had cats. We had dogs. Uh, we had a cat. Uh-huh. We had one dog. His name was Kipper because we got him on Yum Kipper. And uh, yeah. we had so, some cat. My first cat was like Sylvester. And um, what an original name that is. Uh, yeah, they, how'd they come up with that? <laughs> well, I was a kid, you know, and the cartoons were out there, and uh, there we named him Sylvester. That was the first name that came Speaking to mind. Speaking of a name, I, I drew a Mel Blank, but, but yeah, I got to yeah. tell you. But uh, what happened was I actually got to like the cats more than the dogs. I like dogs. I don't have uh, anything against dogs. It's just... Oh, I love dogs. You I gotta, love dogs. You know, you got to pick up their poop, and, you know, cats... Yeah, it, it's immediately, we put down the, the, the you know, her... her litter box or whatever and we put her food somewhere and she immediately knew where these things were and she never shit anywhere in the yep. house she never peed anywhere in yep. the house you know no they, they're so low maintenance they're, they're, so low, low, they're low maintenance they're yeah where a dog you got to <laughs> take them out you I, I wonder if they're like an alien race were to come down from the heavens and see somebody picking up dog shit if who they would think <laughs> of who they would think was the pet Yes. You know. The dogs rule the humans. <laughs> Take me to your collie. Take me to your Labrador. Of course, you remember the days. You remember the <laughs> days. I, we may as well bring this up because it's fact of life. You remember the days when they didn't pick up after their dogs. Oh, sure. Everyone stepped, they stepped in dog duty. Nobody does that anymore. But it was quite a common occurrence and, 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 back and, in the and, day. And you know what you don't see anymore? It was a simpler anymore? time. What you don't see anymore is when the, the dog shit would dry up, it turned like chalky gray. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's been there for a while because nobody ever moved it. But nobody, that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> the you good know. old days. <laughs> if once in a while, you'll see a dog turd somewhere because somebody didn't curb their dog. But that, that, Oh, God, you stepped in dog crap when you were wearing those Ked sneakers with the little grooves on the bottom, and it never fully came out. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man, oh, man. So what I you... remember that. The good old 60s. <laughs> well, let's see. We don't see dog shit on the streets anymore. 
New York doesn't no, have the, the air pollution it used to have. I mean, I remember air pollution no, no. in New York City where, you know, your windowsill would be black. And then oh, you sure, clean yeah. it, and a week later, it'd be black again. You know, yep. So uh, this was, uh, uh, you know. So I, I'm, I, uh, uh, these things uh, have all changed now. We have to pick up after our dog. So that's why I don't want a dog. A cat knows where to yep. shit. You know, yep. a cat, if you feed them, you feed them a certain amount and they'll go over and eat a little bit of it, save some for later. With a dog, yeah, you true. put down a whole <laughs> can of dog food and he eats it in one gulp and that's it. That's right. And, and then they want more. And then, of course, he has to shit. So you have to go out and yep. pick up his shit. Wouldn't it be nice if that stuff was recyclable and you just put the shit back in the can and give it to the dog again? <laughs> Here you go. It's going right through you again. What's the, what's the difference? Yeah. Going to come back out again anyway here and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. So you've been working any uh, any interesting places at all? or? Uh, let's see. I was in Reading several weeks ago. That was fun. Uh, that was a, that was a, They were very nice. There. Everybody was, boy, there was white people there. Everybody was all white. And uh, I asked them, oh, is this Trump country? And so is it not anymore. <laughs> I think he's starting to disappoint his fans. So uh, where else? We had a little... Uh, Birthday party show for Robin's birthday on the twenty first at the Throckmorton Theater with a whole bunch of us there. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, not much going on this month. My calendar has more empty white squares than the audience at a John Tesh concert. I think <laughs> I, I, every time I ask you the question, that's the same answer. You know. Um, well, that's that's all I got. What do you want from me? <laughs> what do you want at these prices? Well, do you, do you, You're not getting Seinfeld. <laughs> Who are all these people? Yeah. Why do they call it the sun? Who's his father? <laughs> Ten million, fifty million, a hundred million, a billion. Well, you know, I mean, he did create a funny television show. You know, oh, but, it was a brilliant show. It'll yeah. be on forever. It's like the honeymooners or I love Lucy. Long after all of us and them are buried in dust, yeah, that show will be on every day somewhere. Yeah, and uh, he and people and, go, that was that was sixty years ago. That was back in the nineties. And as a stand-up, I've got to say that. He was pretty amazing. Uh, I mean, his stuff was... He was, he it, was clean. He worked clean and he wore a suit. He, Take note, you young people. Yeah, he worked clean. But then again, what? so did everybody prior to, you know, 1960 or 70. You know? Yeah, I mean, that's true. You watch an old Jack Benny show, and I guarantee you, you'll laugh your ass off, and there isn't one dirty oh, joke sure. in the whole show. <laughs> Now, Rochester, you cocksucker, get over here before now, you, I kick you in the fucking balls. Now, you, I don't think that would have worked. And it wouldn't have been funny. <laughs> no. <laughs> Dirty Jack, Jack Benny Kennison. Now, I know about hell. I was married for five fucking years. Well, oh, oh. Oh. No, but he would, you know, they would go over to the, the Friars Club, though. And they would do Oh, shit. yeah, they'd be filthy there. <laughs> well, because they couldn't be filthy anywhere else. And, no. and, and they'd be at the Friars Club, and sometimes somebody would record it, which would be a nice thing. Yeah, and some of these people came out of uh, out of vaudeville, so uh, and burlesque. Yep. Burlesque is where a lot of them came from. You know, you go in yeah. on in between the strippers. You know, so sure. Uh, but but the fact was that you watch a Benny show and you say, "This is the funniest shit I've ever seen in my life," and then you suddenly realize. There's not one dirty reference in any way. There's no sexual no. references and no, no four-letter words. I mean, there are simple... What they did with Benny is they created a character, and then yep. they wrote to this character. And Benny exactly. wasn't, wasn't a comedian, I always said. He was a clown. Because the difference between a comedian and a clown is a comedian pulls jokes on people, and a clown has the jokes pulled on him. Oh yeah, and he was always uh, he was always the victim, which made it even funnier. Well, the best one was when he, there was an episode where it was always Jack Benny goes here, Jack Benny goes there, and it was like Jack Benny goes yeah. to New York, Jack Benny goes to Jack the, goes to the dentist, Jack goes to the yeah, yeah, Jack goes yeah. to the supermarket. And this one was Jack goes to the supermarket, and uh, a kid comes up to him and says, "Are you Jack Benny?" And he says, "Yes, I am." He said, "Oh, Mister Benny, I'm so happy to meet you." I'm playing, I play the violin too, he says. And then he looks at him, and this is a, one of the most well-written jokes I've ever heard in my life, and it plays to yep. Benny's character. He says to the kid, do you play like I do? And he says, I used to. I used to. <laughs> <laughs> so far, I saw that one not long ago. It was brilliant, absolutely brilliant. 
And the biggest laugh ever in yeah. radio history was when he's getting robbed and the guy says, you know, it was Sheldon Leonard was the actor. <laughs> he said, your money or your life? And they and silence. And he says, I said, your money or your life? Still silence. Are you going to answer me? I said, your money or your life? And he pauses for a second and says, I'm thinking it over. Perfect. And it wouldn't have worked with anyone else saying it. The laugh on radio <laughs> lasted 45 seconds. Wow, that's like a long-ass laugh. Yeah, long-ass laugh. <laughs> I'm thinking it over. And, and the fact is, that if, if you didn't know the character of Benny, then the joke isn't funny. But if you know the yeah. character, Jack Benny, the cheap Myers or Lee the so, sort, then this is one of the funniest yep. jokes of all time. And he, oh, had, he, had, he had terrible. great he had great writers and uh, uh, you know and but it was all clean and so go back and look at those yep. shows folks oh. you're not going to see a dirty joke in the bunch no it couldn't be dirty back then especially on television it was just like a cartoon it was just out so out there funny like Seinfeld like the Abbott Costello TV show it was like a cartoon and Jack was the victim yeah he but on the other hand on the, uh, Don uh, Wilson and Rochester and Mary everybody on the other hand the it Seinfeld great. for as clean as Seinfeld's act was. His TV show was actually dirtier. His sh- well, it was, it was more abstract. I don't know, dirty. They couldn't. Exactly. They couldn't really get. No they couldn't get dirty. But look, you have a whole episode on them having a masturbation contest. Oh. <laughs> now that's nothing that Seinfeld would talk about in his act. That, that's true. I forgot about that one. <laughs> oh, there are quite a few like that. But you know. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the masturbation contest episode was maybe the best piece of television ever made. That was just terrible. <laughs> the money down, I'm out. <laughs> well, I, ju- I just remember George Costanzo visiting his mother in the hospital, and that was the first episode the mother ever appeared in. And she's yeah. lying in bed, and there's this, like, this next to them, there's this curtain, and then you're seeing the shadows in the curtain. And so it's this woman going, uh, you know, uh, do, do you want to, uh, I want to, let's give you a sponge bath. And <laughs> yeah. you see the wom- <laughs> right. woman, all, the, all this in profile, and he's looking over, you know, and he's trying not to even <laughs> go in the next room and masturbate because he's got to win this contest. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's a very hot looking nurse, too, yeah. I remember. But, I mean, uh, uh, it, but then you go to the Friars Club, and my fucking God. I mean, I've been over there for little shows they do where they get all the old guys like uh-huh. Freddie Roman and so on to, to, uh-huh. to, to get up and tell their, their jokes. And uh-huh. i got to tell you, these were some of the funniest guys I've ever seen in my life. I, I went one night uh, sure. with a friend of mine who belonged to the Friars Club, Steve, and he, and, and I was going, ah, this is going to be a bunch of old comics, you know, fuck it, you know. Yeah. And then I sat there for an hour and a half and never laughed so hard in my life. I mean, these sure, guys. These guys were, know all the old, all the jokes. They know everything. Yeah. <laughs> so. And the dirty ones. I mean, the dirty yeah. ones. Uh, sure. You know, so, I mean, it, it, you know. What? Well, filth. My God, filth. In case people don't know who are listening to us, there was a whole tradition in, in comedy called the Catskills. And these were the mountains where the Jews went for the summer, you know, to go to like yep. uh, Grossinger's or one of those hotels, which uh, the, catered... the Hotel Chaisen and the Hotel Cook and the Hotel Chaim. Yep. Yeah. They're yeah. all up there. And it, it, people learned their craft up there. Uh, and uh, a lot of those people then came down to the city and became big stars. But I mean, I, I, I think in, on the board, they called it the Borscht Belt. The Borscht Belt, uh, yeah. Y- yeah. And uh, uh, I can't remember all the people that came out of there, but I know, I think, like, Burl worked there for a while. And, uh, you know, these guys like Corbett, Monica, and people like that. Sure. Jackie Cahane, Morty Gunty. And so you wonder why. All the legendary guys. Why, especially during that period of time, so many comedians were Jews is because they had a place to work. They had a place to learn their craft. The Uh Gentiles didn't have a place like that to learn their craft. So you didn't have very many (laughs) Gentile comedians at that point in time. I mean, every yeah. every comedian was named Shecky something, you know. That's right. Yeah. Jackie, Shecky, Shecky, Jackie, Jackie, Shecky. So, you come from a long tradition, my friend. A long tradition of Jews, <laughs> bothered Jews with a funny bone. Yeah. Uh, now the idea of a funny sh- Jew is Amy Schumer. I don't understand that one, but we'll hey, move on. Hey, well, I don't get it either. So I don't know. Yeah. It's two generations later. It's like now I know how my parents felt when the Beatles came out. I don't get any of the new shit. 
eight tall. Yeah. So I'll just stick with the old the old guys and the dead guys. Yeah. So uh, so uh, anyway, so you went up to Reading <laughs> and you got to talk to people about uh, who who voted for Trump. Yeah. No, not well. There, let's see. That I just mentioned it from the stage. I just you know, I thought to be like because it was right. really. You know, right. I know it's Wait really. Uh, right. They said it's really conservative up there and. And it, excuse me, the whole audience is very white, and they go, "Okay, so is this Trump You're country?" Right. And one guy goes, "Not anymore." Hold on a second. That my, guy, my, my wife is calling me. Yes, dear, I'm recording. Why? What do you want? I don't have a letter at the end of my social security. And then, <laughs> uh, then an A, then an A from yeah, then an A for Medicare. Okay, bye, bye. See that? That's that's what happens. You get called from giving your... you trouble, Charlie. You just go bada boom. I'm talking here. My, 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 leave me alone, baby. My wife calls me. Right? This is what happens when you get older. Your yep. wife calls you. She isn't calling you to say, "I just wanted to tell you from work. I was li- I was missing you, and I love you." No, it's no, no. You don't hear that anymore. Oh, what, that's in the what's past. your what's your Medicare number? <laughs> <laughs> You know. What's the pin number? I want to buy a coat. Yeah, right. No, but what's your, you know, what's your, what's your uh, number? And uh, the other day, I was doing a, a call with uh, Will Durst, and in the middle of it, uh, Debbie is trying to get him signed up <laughs> for Medicare Part D. Okay, <laughs> this is how old we've all gotten, right? Yeah, there and, you go. And and. Uh, all of a sudden, he has to take the phone and answer a whole bunch of questions. He's giving out his social security number. He's giving out his address. He's giving out his phone number. And I had to go uh, back. No, and, and, and we were shooting this on video. We were doing a video because it was a Skype yeah, oh. call. And I had to go back and edit the goddamn thing because if we didn't want all that information to get out there. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Attention stalkers. You know, not that, you know, not uh, like I don't care if people steal my identity, you know. If somebody else can do a better job of my life than me, God bless you. There you go. That's what Larry Bubbles Brown says. Somebody stole my identity. Now he has no life. Yeah, yeah. I steal that line a lot. That it's is a good line. Yeah. It's a fine, it, fine line. And what I do with with jokes that I steal, I attribute them to the comic who said them. For the first, I think th- you'd better if you like your blood on the inside. It, well, <laughs> no. For the first five times that I say it, <laughs> and then I yeah, there you go. After that, it's. Yes, that's the rule. If you say it five times, then you don't have to attribute it any. It's yours. It's <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the, the rules of the street. The rules of the street. Uh, but yeah, the anyway. rules of the street, they're different. The, the yeah. street ain't like the rest of America, Charlie. Now, you've got a kind of wild act. How do you adapt your act to Reading? Do you adapt? Reading, I just uh, I did what I did, and I, uh, I didn't sweat as much. <laughs> and... Uh, I did. Uh, I just did it, you know. And there were some nice people, and there were some starers, and everybody was cool. And then uh, I stayed at the hotel for a few more hours, and I went home. Oh, really? Oh, okay. So you, you got to stay yeah. at a hotel overnight, or what? Oh, yeah. They were, yeah, they're very nice. It was boiling that day too. I remember, but they were very nice there. Yeah. And I, they fed me some pork wings, and I didn't even know pigs could fly, but uh, they had. They, apparently, they can. Just, pork wings. They fed me pork wings, and they were they were damn good. Yeah. Wow, I've never had. What was the name of the place? It was yeah, it was this was brewery joint. They had so all kinds of. What do they do? They just beer, take they I'm take not, like but... pork meat and then kind of do a, a thing like you would do with buffalo wings or whatever. Yeah, they had like glazed. Yeah, it was like uh, it was really good, and that glazed bacon around it. It was uh, something that you should never have, but this you love it. Uh, glazed bacon around pork. I see. That's a very. Yeah. In fact, after eating it, I'm officially not a Jew anymore, so I can blend in. <laughs> well, no, no, I'll tell you, as a Jew, I, all my life I've loved pork. I mean, I love ribs. I could eat rib. I could eat ribs every night. I, I make eat ribs, bacon, I, sausage, I love ham. I love all that shit. I make great ribs. I make killer ribs. Well, I'm coming right over. Yeah, yeah. I and I love ribs. And uh, uh, me too. I, I'm just you know, it's just the way I am. I everything guess. that you should have. You know. Uh, and I, I know I shouldn't be doing it. I know it's trafe, as they Come call here. it. <laughs> Just as God made me, sir. But I, I consider all the kosher laws to have been laws in, uh, created by the religion to save your life. Because in those days, if you ate pork, chances are you could yep. get trichinosis or a bunch of things like that. But nowadays, we cook Something meat yet. to a certain temperature and everything. Exactly. And it's fine. There's nothing in pork that's going to kill yep. you. 
You know, there's more in beef exactly. that's going to kill you than in pork. Okay? Exactly. So. Peanuts can kill you more yeah. than pork can. Hey, well, listen, we've uh, we've kind of almost run out of time here, but if you'd like to, I'd like to do this again next week. Anytime, my friend, anytime. I will make myself available for you always. I kill for you. I bleed for you. I die for you. I get parking tickets for you. Do you mean that? I mean that sincerely, I, man. I got to tell you, it's you a nutty group of things. Anytime. <laughs> Come to the Springs, man. We'll do Jill St. John in size places. I'll go last, man. Ladies and gentlemen, he's crazy. He's fun. He's Stephen Pearl. Say goodbye. He's old. Goodbye. This is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. And welcome, uh, welcome, welcome, welcome to our live portion of the show. If you're watching us on uh, on Facebook, um, we're on Facebook Live. And uh, just to prove that we are on the air, there, I push the button and the light goes on. Girlfriend will be very happy with that. She always... Uh, Wants me to use that because, uh, well, uh, in my long history of doing this program, uh, she bought that light. And if I don't light it up, which I have to do manually, it's not like you flip a, a microphone switch and it goes on. Uh, there it is. Okay. So, anyway. Hi. How are you? What's happening? Let me get rid of uh, the music stuff and let me bring up... Uh, Skype here because uh, we're going to go to the Skype calls in just a moment when we do a citizen panel. If you don't know how to do this or, or what the ritual is, simply go over to gabnet.net and over on the right hand side of the page, it will tell you exactly what you have to do in order to uh, give us a call. It'll tell you, it'll help you get on to Skype and it'll help you uh, 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 get, uh, have, we have a phone number you can use, just a traditional phone number if you're one of these people who's still very much a Luddite. And, uh, uh, you know, just uh, give us a call. But go over to gabnet.net. Then I don't have to give you the whole ritual on how to do this, which is, uh, is, 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 it could take a bit of explaining. I mean, I could do the next half hour and explain it. By the way, I wear shorts. Have I told you that when I'm doing the show? Yeah. And not underpants. They're sh shorts. And I only say that because I got a, uh, I got a, a note from, uh, from somebody who said, uh, well, you're wearing your underpants? No, no. And it's, it's summer. So, you know, I'm, otherwise I would probably have pajamas on or something, you know doesn't matter what you have below the waist anyway. So anyway, uh, we're op uh, we're, our lines are open and nobody's calling. No. That's, I always look forward to this because if nobody calls, then I just, you know, I just close the show out and we have uh, an hour and a half of absolute and utter silence. Ah, but I can always count on this guy calling. Oops, I accidentally hung up on him. I think that was a subconscious desire. Uh, let me see here. Uh, well, here comes Scott Boddicker. I always have to push the right button where Scott is concerned. Right, Scott? Yeah, I do that. I do that. Scott Morgan. Who is Scott Morgan? Do we know Scott Morgan? Uh, well, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's somebody that we know, I'm sure, here. Okay. Uh, Kevin is calling. God. Uh, Scott Morgan? Are you there, sir? Because I, uh, the guy with the with the dog with the glasses, his dark glasses. Are you there? Are you there, Scott? Okay, well then I'll get rid of him. Alrighty, there we go. Uh, and I get I get uh, get rid of Scott Morgan here. Remove him from the group. There we go. And there's uh, Phil. Hi, Phil. How you doing? Hey, you know. Uh Trump's going to de denuclearize the world. The, Jesus Christ! No, he didn't say that. Yeah, he said he, he would. He, he would like. He would like right. to, but he he can't. You know, uh, that's just that weird. was that was the most fucked up con uh, press conference I've ever seen in a long time. <laughs> really, I liked it. I know, I, I know. I know. Well, we liked it too. It was entertainment and great laughs for us. For you, it was ooh, ooh. He's ooh, ooh. <laughs> yeah. And, well, and I actually people didn't see me doing that because I didn't have the mic on, but I was doing the jerk off motion area. Yeah. A la Brian. Oh, 
I, I noticed the jerk off motion uh, wasn't moving very far in your hand, so maybe uh, you know. Believe me, you know, believe me. Only, uh, you know, a little, <laughs> little. Any one of us, any yeah. one of us, has a bigger dick than Trump. Uh, <laughs> My dog has. <laughs> Your dog has a bigger dick. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, good evening, everybody. Yeah, yeah, good evening. Uh, no, uh, so, yeah, we get good evening. Yes, that's true. No, I just decided today, as I was listening to all this uh, Michigas that was going on, that every day, every day, there is some drama dealing with Donald Trump. You know, there there were days when we went three, four days without big Obama news, right? But here, every day, it's another talking thing that we got to do about this motherfucker. And quite it's frankly... A, it's, a, it's a soap opera. Yeah, would you move your really move your mic just into the next room if you can? Okay. I listen to you on uh, on uh, Damien's show, and it's, your microphone is just plain annoying. Okay, how's that there? Well, you, if you could lower it down even more by using your the uh, switch. Is there a mute? The volume. There. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that thing where it's a, it's a red button and you push it and you go. Oh no, that uh, no. Uh, anyway, where were we? Um, if I were if I were HR at the White House, uh, I would get rid of Donald Trump just because, as you would say to the same kind of employee, I don't need this much drama at work, you know, yeah. and and you got all this drama going on. Hello. You know, it's uh, wait minute, wait interesting. Scott, Scott. Did you see the? Uh, yeah. Did you see the end of? Uh, uh, I think it was the the news with Lester Holt tonight. They interviewed. Uh, the the guys that do the the oh shit what am I trying to say the Saturday Night Live news they're gonna put on tonight and they they were complaining that they have totally missed so much shit that they they can't even catch up well because they're not on during the summer yeah you know. yeah they're not By on the way, during the summer to Scott, but this is the prime for them hello to Scott Morgan now that I see his face I remember Scott I didn't uh, I didn't I but I I was having a hard time with the name. Uh, <laughs> Oh, you just flipped yep. your picture, didn't you, Scott? Did you? Uh, did I? I've been trying to reconfigure all this. Oh, I see. Okay, uh, but anyway, so uh, wh where was I? Oh, so yeah, so they they you know they've they've been off for the summer. Quite frankly, I don't think they're that good. Okay. No, okay. it's just the fact that it's true that they've missed all that stuff. Yeah. You know, just by not being on a couple months. Yeah. Uh, I'll well, I'll start watching that uh, when John Bellucci comes back. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Wait a minute. Never. Hold on a second. Well, you know, you're, he he might come back because, after all, uh, uh, Trump is your Messiah, and he can raise people from the dead. Uh, can well, I still a question? Trump, Trump was born on a, a magic mountain, and uh, <laughs> yeah. you know. <laughs> Phil, <laughs> what's that? For you, what 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 do Republicans think is funny political humor? I have no idea. I mean, what do you what do you, what do you guys think is funny? Oh boy, 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 boy if you got if you got uh, oh. turn down your, your microphone a little bit there, uh, uh, Brian. Brian, because speed racer going there. Yeah, or you had some kind of noise that was going on. There. I don't know. <laughs> I have it's, it sounded it, to, uh, it, it sounded uh, like you were outside Tony's house. <laughs> you know? that, that, he's hungry, and that was his stomach. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, I I think all of this is pretty funny. Uh, you know, there are a lot of people that uh, from from the Democratic side that look at some of Trump's jokes that don't come across very well, yeah. and they don't think it's funny. They take everything at face value. Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute. He, Hold on a second! Hold serious. on a second! Trump tells jokes. Yeah, you know, the, the way he tries to communicate. No, wait a, minute, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, you said he told jokes. I want to hear a joke Donald Trump has told recently. Well, th there's one that they're all complaining about, something to do with Nazis and the, and, and the Holocaust. I, I didn't hear the joke. I just heard all the... Well, well, uh, no, but, I, but then you're not giving me an example because you weren't well, paying attention. And if you weren't well, paying you, you attention... Need to, you need to preface that with distasteful jokes. 
well, maybe, but you know, the, the, the thing is, uh, I can't speak for all Republicans. I think I have a really good sense of humor, and I think I can find the humor in just about anything. And uh, so when it comes to the Republicans, I can't speak for them. Some people, you know, there's just too much, uh, people are taking too much, too serious, uh, you know, they, they, uh, they try to take things out of context and they're just trying to make their point. I, I mean, do, do you watch? How do I sound now, by the way? Uh, you're sounding fine. You're sounding great. What's got? I'm sorry. Do, do you watch Saturday Night Live? Wait a minute. There is some uh, noise. There going. Going. Do you think it's funny at all or any? Not or I don't know. Yeah, I, I used to watch Saturday Night Live, but I, I just can't stay up that late. You know. Well, you can always uh, watch. You can always watch John Oliver. Uh, it, now, John Oliver is the guy with the black glasses. Yeah. Uh, English accent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hey, he's a moron. Uh, absolute okay. moron. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Oh, really? He's a moron. Yeah, and not funny. No, not funny. Oh. Uh, Let me see here. Everybody, who, uh, any, uh, uh, let's take a vote here. Those who think uh, um, John Oliver is funny, oh. will you raise your hand, please? Yeah, I think he's funny. He's yeah. also philanthropic, from what I understand. Really? I didn't know that. It, it, oh, yeah. He hasn't sent me anything lately. Well, how well, it? uh, it's not for you. It's for people who are. I thought it was the like people who had uh, been rendered bankrupt from medical expenses and whatnot. Mm-hmm. That he uh, bailed a lot of them out. It's, this made uh, this made the news. Yeah, on the show, year, he took some of the. Ago. He took some you of look the. Look it up online. It should show. Yeah, he took some of the budget from the show and passed it out to people who had to take care of their medical. Uh, That's probably why his show sucks. That's your opinion. I think his show is one of the most brilliant pieces of comedy going. How about you, Rob? How, you, you, you watch? Don't John, know it. You don't, don't watch John it. Oliver. I mean, I do. I find him uh, spectacular. It's another great. nasty little piece of uh, 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 retard. Uh, Tell out me, there. how does he? Uh, I, I, since you've seen his show, how is how is it parceled out? I haven't seen it that often. Oh, well, then why don't you shut the fuck up by saying this guy is a moron? I thought of it. I have watched it. No, you watched it once. Shit. You watched it maybe for half a show. I bet you. Possibly. Possibly. a piece of shit. Okay, well, I've been been with Trump for the last 200 days, and I can tell you he's a piece of shit. Yes, Scott. John, uh, it doesn't take anybody very long to understand. Scott is trying to talk, Phil. What? What? I, I just want to ask Phil, can, can you name me one funny Republican co- comic? I mean, I don't know any. Do you? Um, yeah. What's that name? Allen, that uh, Tim Allen or something? Uh, the, you know, no, 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 no. He's not a stand up comic. He hasn't been for the last 40 years. I was thinking uh, uh, Dennis, Dennis Miller. Miller Den- used to be funny. Dennis Miller used yeah, to be did. funny. but yeah, Until he yeah. sold his soul. Yeah. Well, it isn't he, a matter. He, he was actually pretty liberal. Too. No, so, I would. So, I, I, I would be able. I would be able to enjoy a good right wing comedian, if there were any. Uh, uh, Dennis Miller is a very confused human being who used uh, does, <laughs> has never known exactly what he was, and now has thrown his lot in with the right because he figures maybe he can make some money there, and he's not even making money there. I mean, he's pretty well out of the business. Well, he does tour with uh, Bill O'Reilly, doesn't he? I think. Does he, he really? Used to- you do a two-man tour. Yeah, yeah. O'Reilly's funny. O'Reilly, <laughs> O'Reilly can be funny. Yes, I agree yeah. with you. Yeah, it can be funny. Yeah, and I've watched no, no, his show for more than five minutes, so I can I'm, I can tell you I think he's funny. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, unlike you, well, watched John too, Oliver too, for five minutes too, and made your opinion because yeah, absolutely because you, uh, because you know you know because you don't it, because you know you, you're you're assuming that because he's on the left he can't possibly be funny. No, because all he talks about is his disdain for Trump. Uh, no, his, he doesn't. Uh, As a matter of fact, then you don't watch the show. Uh, no, absolutely. Then I you don't watch, watch the shows. show. Every week there is a different topic that he takes up as the main part well, of the show. The, begin- the beginning of the show is to talk about the news. We always right. talk about Trump here because every day this guy does something we, we f- feel compelled to talk about. And so, you know, at the beginning of the show, he might have something about Trump. But like uh, a couple of weeks ago, he did a thing about, you know, the, the, the broadcaster, the right wing broadcaster. Uh, they, he did a thing about uh, what's his name? Yeah, the, the, I, I watched that thing that uh, you had where uh, uh, he was talking about uh, the 
shows that all had the same. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the Sinclair same broadcasting. Doesn't that bother you? Sinclair. Doesn't that uh, bother no. you? Oh no, because it, it, because they agree with you. But I, I, you would go crazy if some right winger, left winger, did that. Well, they 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 do that. It's called CNN, MSNBC. Yeah. Uh, you know, just because they don't have multiple stations, Excuse me, they in case do you just, internationally. Just, you just joined us, folks. So this guy is Phil Meyer, and he's a Trump wannabe. Go ahead, <laughs> Phil. And well, this is Tim Albright, his mini-me. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The one who does all... Uh, have you guys ever noticed Trump walk the way he walks now? He kind of waddles. Ah! He's, well, he's a fat man. He's a fat pig man. Tim, 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 Tim was talking. Mike. He was patterned after Donald Duck, and Donald Duck represents all the personality traits that Disney hated in people. You know, impatience, being irascible, being uh, selfish. Yeah. Just quack, 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 quack. Uh, uh, which just, one? And he's miserable, miserable all the time, totally miserable. I, I'd like Chris one day. He went, he went on a seventeen-day vacation. Couldn't he just fucking shut up for for seventeen days? Leave it's us alone. Vacation. Give me seven. Well, give me seventeen. He needs 17, to come back because he's costing us money. Well, no, but giving me, give me seventeen bad days, days of bad shows because there's nothing to talk about. Yes, Mike. Or, or at least it's, just it's, talk about himself. Yeah. Is it, is he on his uh what do you call it his new golf course he owns now? I don't think it's new. I don't know if it's new. It's not new. And he's there. Minister yeah. or something? Huh? Bed bed minister or uh it's bed in New Jersey. Bed minister. Yeah, I, thought, I thought he I thought he bought it, didn't he? Yeah. He owns it. Hey, I wish he'd buy it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you know. Oh, no. uh, Somebody's knocking at my door. I'll be right back. No, oh, okay. You know, they may not have let him in if he didn't buy it. So, you know, hey, that was funny. <laughs> the spy plane, what do you think about the spy plane flying over his bed, Mr. Golf Course? I didn't know. Was, was there a spy plane? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, there was a, a non military a Russian plane that flew over uh, the Pentagon and it did a circular route all the way back over toward Bedminster and so on. It's a nuclear uh, drone. <laughs> Yeah, did they violate any uh, restrictions? We, we have an agreement at the present time that if you have at least one American or a citizen from that country on the plane, and you don't have any weapons on the plane, that you can you can fly over American. Because we have Russian airliners that come in, obviously, but obviously they're used for spying purposes too. Yeah. But, uh, we'll how can shoot. he think? How can he thank Putin for kicking our people out? Hey, it saved a lot of money. You should thank him. No, no, those people still. What? We know that we need those people to win the Cold War, Phil. We're going to yeah, lose. Well, it's time to come in out of the cold, and uh, you know, I I think Trump no, said, "Hey, there's military I, personnel involved. People need to take care of their social security. There's a lot of government <laughs> service to Americans in Russia that no, can't be taken care of." There's four hundred people still there doing their job. Not enough. Not enough. Hundred. <clears throat> Did you hear how but he, don't, uh, don't thank how he him said for that? It. That's ridiculous. Yeah, he's saving you money. Did you hear how he did that too? No, because those people are still on the he, payroll. He, he, don't thank thank you for money. <laughs> I don't trust him. I yeah, think during during the yeah. press conference, during the press conference, he goes, he says, "I want to thank Mr. Putin for uh, reducing my payroll." Jesus yeah. Christ! He's got Putin laying people off now. You, you don't see the humor in that? No, you don't no. think it's funny? Oh, that's, that was, oh, that was a joke. I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I thought it was funny. Somehow it was it's some, it's funny. <laughs> I guess we're saving money, too, by kicking out the rest of the ambassadors. You know, everybody out of the, you know. Uh, Those people dedicate their lives to, to protect our country, and yeah. they deserve respect, not to Imagine be joking them, about. Imagine being one of those guys in that in that office over there, and all of a sudden that comes out. And you're sitting over there. Fuck that. Well, no, those you are the guys the, that still got a job. You know the Russian Don't poker player, Gasparov? You know who that is? Yeah. yeah. The Russian poker player? No. He's now, he lives here. Poker he's player? No, he's... He, he, wait, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. He, Tim, 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 Tim. He's not a poker player. He's a chess player. A chess player. I'm sorry. It's chess. Chess is hard. But he said, well, if Trump would thank him if we sank one of our ships because we'd have less payroll and maintenance. 
That's not what he That's said. That's how ridiculous it is. That's not what he said. So, uh, he said he wanted to reduce uh, personnel and he wanted to reduce the cost of uh, of the uh, international uh, the, the people that he let that were let go. Or, 250 people. He's not even nominated for the State Department. We have well, no he, experts. He we have said no experts running this well, country. I, obviously, he doesn't feel the State Department's as important as you do. And. Uh, well, well, because we're going to win the war with soft diplomacy. The way, we're not going to win it with nuclear bombs. By the way, I want to point something out. that It's at, it's 1049 at about two minutes ago, three minutes ago, we actually had a full house this early in the night. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations. Yeah. So, you know, whatever. Let's, inquiring minds want to know. <laughs> all right. Inquiring minds would like to forget, you know. We have a full house now. What was that? I don't know. Oh, I think it was some of that acoustic attacks like they had down in Cuba. Oh, yeah, they had oh, those. Yeah. Did you hear about the acoustic attacks? Yeah. I, I, I but it wasn't know. Cuba doing it. It wasn't Cuba. Uh, Cuba don't have enough money for that type of equipment. It was, was definitely it Russia, at? most probably. Well, wow. who, who was it aimed at? It was aimed uh, at... Our, our personnel and also a Canadian, somebody Jane. on the Canadian embassy staff, uh, it, it, can, it can make you sick. It can make you go deaf. Oh, then it's Trump. Uh, it's a very high, highly sophisticated system that probably only the Russians would be able to handle. So they ever gave it to Cuba. We're back in the middle of the Cuba, Cuban Missile Crisis almost. So what what was the song that they were playing? Was it the intro to no, the... No, it's acoustic the effect. No, what? Like, they say it's it even inaudible. Like, it's inaudible. It was like hip-hop, but you couldn't hear it. Oh, well, hey, I, even when they play hip-hop, I can't hear it. You no, 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 I think, I think they're doing it also in Russia. That's also. because you don't understand it. I think they're also doing it in Russia also, the same thing. Uh, to our embassy? Yes. I didn't hear that one. No, that that, that was the marching band uh, trying to uh, exit our uh, our personnel. Okay, well, we've nobody's laughing, Phil. We've come to a grinding <laughs> halt. You're Another Republican comedian. Hey, this, I it, it's, a, it's a Republican joke that went right over our heads, I guess, huh? They all do. Uh, they just, do. <laughs> just like the North Korean nuke's going to go over the Japanese heads pretty soon. It's kind of hard for. A, it's kind of hard for a right-wing comedian to be funny when he's got a wooden board crammed so far up his ass. He's got some blunders that makes him want to look funny. <laughs> now that's that's <laughs> funny. That's <laughs> funny. That's that. Can we take another vote? That's that, that's comedy, folks. Yeah. <laughs> and it, I it, call it, for a vote. Huh? <laughs> I call yeah. for a yeah. vote. How many here? How many here <laughs> vote that that was funny? Will you please raise your hands? There we go. Okay. <laughs> Put your thumbs down, fill out a spike. Yeah. <laughs> I yield the rest of my time. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that uh, son of a bitch, uh, I can't remember his name now, yesterday, who made the comments about McCain, walked them back today. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He, oh, he probably, well, he probably he was trying to be sympathetic. Oh, the uh, Wisconsin uh, the senator, was it? Yeah. yeah. I've been listening to audio books. So I'm a little out of the loop. What, what, what happened? Uh, this uh, this guy, uh, this uh, se senator from uh, Wisconsin, I can't remember his name. I haven't got it right here. Ron uh, Johnson. Ron Johnson <laughs> last <laughs> night, uh, yesterday. Oh, uh, yeah, him. Huh? Sounds like a porno dude. What? Yeah, he does sound like a porno, like you said. Dave Johnson. Dave Johnson, yeah, yeah. Biggest dick in the business. Anyway. Uh, Richard Johnson. <laughs> yeah, but anyway, no, uh, he uh, he said that, uh, uh, that McCain uh, voted the way he did because he has a brain tumor. Oh, yeah, and that he yeah. was incapable. Yeah, it was late at sure. night. It was like 1.30 in the morning. You know. Well, uh, he didn't mention that this man is very, very sick. Okay? And he came all the way to Washington, D.C. to cast this vote. All right? Got to hand it to him. You know? if, if he didn't cast the vote, could they have overridden it uh, with nope. Uh, Pence? Nope. Nope. Um, no, by three. No, Pence, Pence, Pence wouldn't, have oh, wait. wouldn't have mattered whether he voted wait, yes or wait no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The vice president presides over the over the uh, um, Senate. Over the Senate? Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No. So, uh, uh, if it were a tie, he would break yeah. the tie. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, the thing the thing is, is McCain did come back and he voted that 
to move the uh, repeal to debate. Yeah. So yeah. and then Pence voted, broke the tie then. Right. You have uh, to think. I'm so, just thinking. You have, well, that actually could be a benefit. The fact that it's up for debate rather than being shut off entirely. The fact yeah, that they have to go on record and talk about this shit. And we have to hear just how horrible and awful and rotten and archaic and all these other uh, 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 descriptive terms I have for the re- re- Republican senators are in, in, in terms of how badly they want to fuck us over, us being the uh, lower people on the scrotum pole of importance. Well, <laughs> get, get back to McCain, he, what he wanted, as Scott had pointed out, was debate. But then when it went to a vote... Uh, without the debate, he voted against it. Yeah, but he right? Because he couldn't get a guarantee that they wouldn't pass it as is. Because it could have been passed by the House as is, even though he had assurances. There was no guarantee from Ryan. He talked to Ryan a long time, and there was no guarantee. It went back to the House. They could just agree with it all. It would, mm-hmm. it would go through as written, and, and he wouldn't go for that because there was well, no guarantee. There was also a lot of backroom uh, between uh, Pence and uh, McCain. Uh, you know, somebody had mentioned on one of the earlier shows here that uh, that uh, Pence was nowhere to be seen. But I think what he was doing was he was doing arm twisting of uh, of McCain. And yeah, they started leaving that. out the back door right before that vote. He left. They saw. They, he was leaving the building when when they, they knew the it was vote. over. No, but you know the thing with McCain is. McCain took the fall for some other senators because there was another handful of senators, maybe five, many as five or six, that no way could get reelected if that got voted through. They knew they could not win, and they really didn't want to vote. But they didn't want to be the one to vote no because they didn't want hell and brimstone to come rain on, on them from that White House. So McCain took the fall for all the others because he's a hero, just well, like he I- did for his man during the war. And there was five or six other ones that really didn't want to vote for it, as is, even with the assurances that would go to committee or reconciliation, I guess. Well, yeah. So, uh, that's uh, why, that's why McConnell's not going to touch it, because it they didn't miss it by one vote. They did the one vote thing to make McConnell look good, like I did my best. It was all kabuki theater. They yeah. couldn't have passed it. If, if it wasn't for McCain, somebody else would have taken the fall. But Trump, Trump, Trump was one of the few yeah. people that called uh, uh, McConnell out on the carpet and said, look, you, you wanted to repeal, you wanted to replace, but when yeah, it came to... Now it's popular, Bill. Why would done? they want to pass something that, ever, that only 17% of the country wants passed? You know, at some point, you've got to give up your mottos and your inner rhetoric and deal with life as it is. Well... You don't, the, you don't have to stick by... Hey, and, and the most intelligent people through history have changed their minds. Yeah. Oh. That's, that's the, a sign the, of an intelligent person. That you guys will become Trump supporters? No, I no. was in the beginning. I was in the beginning. I absolutely was. And, I still uh, like a handful of things. But he's he's crazy now. He said he modernized the arsenal. Yeah, that, that was the, the, that was the, that that. Was, that was well, the they, big... They wait, that, hold that. on. That was the big lie today. Uh, yeah, they, that he, he, that he, he couldn't couldn't say no to. He couldn't even act like he was mad at Putin. Be, you know, you read between the lines. He was thanking Putin for not releasing all that blackmail stuff. Well, we don't know that. Uh, he said that the Democrats were in collusion uh, with the Russians on that blackmail stuff. Did, did, if you watch Trump when he was talking today about Manafort, every time he started to tell a lie, he looks down. And to the left. He, so you he think has he's a <laughs> He looks down when he's telling a lie. He is scared to death now that they're under the financial records. They issued subpoenas to global banks also within the last day or so to get all of Manafort's records. And Trump's tangled up in all that stuff, too. Yeah. So, and he said he didn't even know down. about it. He claims yeah, he didn't it, know about it. Well, he claims a lot of things, like he, he, he completely revamped our nuclear system in 200 yeah. days. Yeah. How do you do that? Everything is done in six remember months. Claire, <laughs> what, what, anybody what, remember the name Claire George? R- Rob, no. are you trying to say something there in all of this? No, I, I agreed with you. That's all. I mean, uh, he, 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 he revamped the, the, uh, the, the, nuclear, the entire nuclear weaponry 
in 200 days. And he, he also he also he also was bragging about the fact that his first 200 days they have passed more legislation. They've done more stuff than any other administration has ever done. And, 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 and I said, and I, well, first thing I was going to say is how many of those are executive orders? No, he said there was a ton of executive orders, and he said it was anywhere between 42 and 48 uh, uh, pieces of legislation. That oh, were passed? Executive orders is a bunch Phil, of shit, Phil. Phil, it's time to start giving it up. You got he, 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 this guy is going to crash and burn, man. And you're going to crash crashes. Man, you don't want to go down with the shit. Yeah, you don't want to look like you don't want to look like a moron anymore. Come on, join us. No. <laughs> you don't have to. Let me ask Phil a question he can't Bill. answer, Alex. Sure. Phil, ask Phil a question. Who's Claire George? Wait a minute. I don't know who Claire George is. He was the highest senior official operative with the CIA that was uh, that was convicted of a federal crime under Iran-Contra. He, 15 days later, he spent 15 days in prison, and 15 days later, Ford pardoned him. And guess what? It wasn't what? Ford, was it? Bush, Bush pardoning. But, you know, his attorney is now working for Manafort. Well, I guess he's going to need a good attorney. If, he if, he uh, plans it, on getting a pardon. He wants to do the right stuff to get a pardon. Hey, everybody's allowed a good defense in this country. Uh, oh, absolutely, but, but that just tells you what kind of case. The, and then the, he had to get rid of his attorney that worked for the same law firm that Mueller did. Because I think Jared Kushner had to let his go, too, because uh, they were both from that big firm. So he let him go, and he got an, a guy that's an expert in money in money laundering, in bank accounts, and tax evasion, and all that. So Was there 1 800 lawyers? They're going after for money laundering. No, 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 hey, Rob. No, no, it's 1 800. Two lawyers. Yeah. That was funny, uh, Rob. Yeah. Uh, but most of the stuff that By the, the way, Democrats Phil is trying them. to feign having a sense of Phil, humor. You, you don't have to jump onto our side, but you should no, jump no, off. No, no, no. Right. You should jump off the Trump bandwagon. No, actually. Say, well, you know, maybe he's not all that. Uh, well, what happens when Trump uh, defeats the Korean, the North Koreans and gets them to give up their nuclear uh, ambitions? There's no way to do that. We're, yeah. we're in a stalemate. No, I don't yeah, think it's going to be a stalemate. I think he's dialing it up. I think we've had eight years prior to this you, of... You can't of, take it out without killing hundreds of thousands of Americans, Japanese, and millions. That's okay. I'm talking I about 10 million South Koreans. He's going, to, he's going to do it without firing a shot. But that's okay, because we'll get the nuclear... How is he going to do it without firing a shot? Yeah. Uh, he's, he's ramping up the rhetoric and he's getting the world opinion against oh, and wait a minute. he's ramping oh, up shit, the Bill. he's ramping up the rhetoric and right. in North but Korea they're just, ramping up their missiles. Oh no, this is good. He's not just just keep there Alex. and on top he's of that, not, listen, listen, I'm gonna tell you something. Yeah. Uh, the only person who has an ego equivalent to uh uh uh, 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 uh <laughs> I keep forgetting Kim Jong Un -un is Donald Trump and they're both playing into each other's egos. And every time Donald Trump talks about this thing and makes these threats, he is making he's he's making this little shrimp about two feet higher. You know, you know, the Uh, problem you don't understand that that's exactly what a tin horn dictator like that wants is that recognition that he's now getting from Donald Trump. Donald Trump understand. should he suck his fucking power. dick and make he, him feel just as good. He needs to be slapped down. He needs to be put in his. But place. he's not being place. slapped down. He's being. He's being. He's given. Being last couple of days been given an ego boost. Am I right? Yeah. Am I right, I'm, Rob? Do you agree with me on that? Hundred percent. He's uh, a. He's dangerous. He doesn't think. Logically, here's a guy who who's, his whole country is is all based on this lie that he doesn't poop. All these things that we heard about yesterday. Poop. Whoever. He's a great what a sick what is a sixty golfer or whatever it was. The crazy okay. things that I mean, this is a, a nut. This is who Trump looks up to because this is everything he he cheats when he plays golf. Fake news. Everybody makes it's all fake news. Yeah, sure. He's a pe- this is from people who Not play with him. Look, Trump was born on the top of a magic mountain. And oh, I'm tired of that bullshit. <laughs> you have hey. no, no sense of humor. Bullshit. 
This is not funny. This is not funny, Phil. I don't know why you think this is funny. It's very funny. It's funny because... It's hey, Phil, what are we going to do when Kimmy sends his missiles toward uh, Guam next week? We're going to shoot him out of the air. That's what we're going to do. Okay, You're going to hope that, we that, shoot him out of the war? air. No, I, uh, shooting his missiles down isn't going to start a war, but shooting his it missiles will, like hell down, it will. He's going to shoot him near Guam, but we'll have to shoot him down because we can't be sure that he's going to miss Guam if he shoots That's that. correct. And why shouldn't and we shoot go over them? top of Japan? Do we shoot them down before they go over Japan? Well, his yeah. problem, the, the, the problem here is that he has not said that he's going to hit Guam, but that he's going to shoot them about 20 miles here. off the coastline of Guam with four mess, missiles. Now, but what the, bothers me, well, no, what bothers me is that he hasn't gotten the technology down 100 percent. And I don't think he has that kind of accuracy, which we do. You know, yeah. so we're going to have to shoot those things down if they're coming in our direction. And you know? what they're saying is, is we should assume that they're uh, they they could be nucu- uh, armed in a, a nuclear way, and that uh, we ought to uh, retaliate. You know, you really got to do something about that, Phil. I'm <laughs> you're, you're driving me nuts with nuclear. You should at least pronounce Kimmy's next move then. What, uh, what are you going to say, Rob? Pronounce a thing that will kill you. Yeah, you should uh, be able to pronounce the thing that will kill you. You're on correctly. the West Coast, but you don't want every time I say it, it pisses Alex off. No, you say <laughs> it because you refuse to be smart in that respect. Uh, I, you know, I well, told nuclear. you know you're 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 automatic television critic on a show you saw for five minutes. You know, your nuclear is nothing more than pimple cream. Oh bullshit. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on, folks. A Repu- wait, hold on. Hold on. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. A Republican joke, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> See? Yeah, he recognizes humor when he sees it. Much funnier than I, I, know, I, I know a Republican joke. Yeah, yeah, what's that? He's in the White House right now. See, I knew you were going to say that. Ooh, I, that's, ooh, that's, ooh. that's some a joke, eh, boss? This is some a joke. He has ooh, boss. Ooh. Yeah, right. Yeah. This, Drop this, the mic. Uh, this, this bill is so simple a four-year-old child could understand it. Hey, go out and get me a four-year-old child. I can't make I can't make heads or, heads or tails of this bill. Bada boom. That's Trump. Yeah. <laughs> hunger, dung, hunger, hunger, dung, hunger, hunger, dung, and McCormick. Look, it's about time somebody stood up to Kim Jong Un. Uh, you cost. know, the world, the world has been letting him uh, beat his chest and do whatever the heck Have he wants. Have you seen how short that guy is? Anybody can step up to him. Yeah, really. Uh, but, you know, it's it's time that somebody challenged him back. And he's not going to do anything. Like most bullies, they're all full of hot air. And what, what if he, oh, what if he what does? does? He's got a million man does? army. Who's that, sir? Then, then why do they antagonize him? Who's antagonizing? He's antagonizing the world. How many uh, how many yeah, but, uh, blasts but, has he done in the last two, three years? You just let him sit there and mouth off. If you uh, let him sit there and mouth off and ignore the guy, because when probably you nothing would happen. But, Kevin, but when you don't Trump say has to anything, turn around and start talking shit. Kevin, when you don't say anything and you just let the guy do what he's doing and you let him get away with it, what's going to end up happening, he's going to get bolder and bolder and bolder until he actually does something. It's, it's I agree necessary. with you, Phil. Yeah, I mean, have they been letting him get away with right. it? I mean, we yes, don't do it just... through tweets. We it's do been it through 40 years, hasn't it? solid negotiations and dip- diplomacy, not through tweets. When you get tired of a subject, you just tweet out crazy stuff. Yeah, let me ask you a question you, you... here. Let me let me propose a question here. If you notice Kim Jong Un and his uh, history, um, he wasn't acting up on like this until Trump became president. Oh, that's yeah. not true. No, uh, no wait, hold you on a second. No, memory. no, no. Well, I, not I, as obnoxious. No, anyway. he, he, you know, he, he made stupid claims and he, he did all kinds of silly stuff. But the fact is, the, the, the matter is, he wasn't getting the rockets up and he wasn't, you know, he, he was only talking about nuclear devices. Don't give me the no. Yeah, They've done tests. He's shot off yeah. so all, I'm, all I'm saying is that basically he wasn't saber rattling. He was. No, he. he Alex, he had underground nuclear tests, and those were done years what before. What kind of tests? Uh, nuclear. <laughs> oh, you can't even get it out of your mouth, <laughs> can you? Though. You know, you could stay in a hotel in Guam for eighty-three dollars, a three-star hotel. I'm but pretty sure you'll be able to stay there for free, <laughs> but it'll be a glowing experience. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is, I think that he saw an adv- uh, that he could get Trump's goat easily, and so he started getting very verbose about all of this within the last 200 days. When they asked Trump 
prior uh, uh, when he was president elect what is one of the most uh, challenging things in the world today North Korea was at the top of his list that's right. and, and you know, so uh, he's he's taking care Challenging of Challenging for him, a cakewalk for anybody else. <laughs> and why Guam? Is just this because it happens to be there? Or is it just close to well, Korea? Because, because you can make jo- because there are jokes about it, like here today, Guam tomorrow. You know? Because <laughs> <laughs> these guys are just caught in the middle now. They don't even do nothing. What There's do you mean no to do anything? There are, three, there are three military bases that take up a third of the island, which is only 30 miles long, by the way. Uh, it's also it. pr- what did uh, you say, pr- Rob? He could easily miss it if it's only 30 miles. It, well, uh, he, he can't hit it, yeah. Well, that's he, why he's sending four missiles. Oh, I mean, That's he's, why he's going to he, hit him in the water, because it knows he'll hit the water. Well, he's talking about sending missiles, and missilery is something he hasn't completely mastered yet. Yeah. You know, most of the time those things wind up blowing up or, or, or winding up short of where they want it to, to land. And but just missiles. having them be that aggressive to send them there is is really, uh, uh, you know, well, very aggressive. No, here's, I, mean. here's, I don't think he's going to do it, and here's the reason why. I agree. Uh, I, oh, good. I'm glad you agree with something I said. Now he's probably, not going to do it. No the, no, the reason I don't think he's going to do it is uh, I think, number one, he doesn't have the capability yet. Uh, and uh, secondly, uh, he... Uh, he he doesn't want to do it because even that as would be considered enough of an act of provocation that he knows he could be burned to a cinder within seconds of those things landing. So, yeah. But, man, he'll take out a lot on the way. Yeah, but, you know, I, I think that he an, an, has enough of an ego that he loves being the head of a country, and he'd like to still have a country to be the head of. And I think he knows the reality. Uh, where, where if Russia were to send rockets or nuclear missiles our way, we'd send them their way, and it would be mutual self-destruction. Okay, in his case, it would be a one-way destruction because he doesn't have enough missiles. If he sends those four missiles up, those are the only missiles he's going to have. All right, Some true. Yeah. Did he have okay. hundred hey. warheads aimed at South Korea. Uh, uh, hey, Alex, they're not I, nuclear, are they? No, uh, no. Yeah, yeah, Scott. Yeah, they're just the other okay, Scott. Just- to take your scenario that you just laid out, which I think is probably one of the truest or the most believable that I've heard in a while. Um, all right, so suppose he doesn't launch anything, but he's not going to stand stand by and let Trump bully him. He's going to be giving Trump back the finger all the way along. So he says, all right, I can't launch and hit Guam, but what I can do is I can do either another open air or subterranean nuclear test and basically say hey america i'm still developing here you go i'm testing then what do you do that will stick in trump's crawl more than well, or just yeah much well as i, I mean the, a launch on guam what we have here are two babies okay agree and they're both Agreed. wait a minute phil put your hand down they're, they're both crying their eyes out and trying to attract as much attention as they can possibly get and when and when one says something the other ramps it up and then the that one ramps it up again and all it is is this uh this uh fuselage if you will a fuselage is that the word is fuselage or fuselage i can't remember Uh, fuselage is a anyway anyway, it's it's a war of words the only problem the only problem with that is sometimes those war of words can wind up uh, becoming a button somebody pushes and and that's the kind of you know, a tendril that we're on right now. I don't even yeah, know if that's the right and see, word. The thing is, is what you've just laid out is, is if you launch at Guam, yes, I think the rest of the world could say, hey, you shot something at us, nuclear or not, we didn't know, we're justified in glassing you or turning you to glass. Yeah. However, if he says, hey, I just tested a weapon underground and America goes ape shit, Trump lets his ego get the best of him and does a preemptive attack, that's a whole different thing that it, now you are violating his sovereignty to do what he wants to do on his land in his caves because you don't want him to have it. And that argument lets the whole damn genie out of the well, box. You know, also, the question is, and I brought this up many times, how dare we as a nation tell another nation they can't have a nuclear weapon when, in fact, we have one that we could point at them. 
Uh, you know, and people are mad about uh, um, Iran because Iran might get the bomb eventually. And how dare they have a nuclear device? Well, you know, oh, they can say we, we, we're doing this in our country for our protection. And you're right. He should be able to do what he wants to do in his country. But no. we shouldn't react to it. We shouldn't go all apoplectic. We shouldn't soothe his ego by getting really mad about it. I know you're dying to say something, Phil, but let me just have my show for a moment. Um, sure. And and the fact of the matter is that all what what the thing that worries me here is the instability not of Kim Jong Un but of both of them, okay, and where this will continue to go because these two people have massive egos, and uh, and and one of them might push the button. That's what I'm worried about. And of, of course, I'm not worried about us because we can take those missiles down without any problem. But the fact of the matter is I'm worried about all those poor people in North Korea who are going to be turned to literally dust, you know? And what he could do to South Korea as well. And what, and what he could do in his last gasp of moments to South Korea. Well, it, exactly. Yeah. You're not talking about a, 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 a nuclear strike in North Korea, right? You're talking about a, 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 a traditional warhead type of bombing right i wouldn't put talking, i wouldn't put nuclear i wouldn't put nuclear past uh past donald if he, trump if he puts nuclear war if he puts nuclear weapons down in north korea he's killing everybody in south korea yeah he yeah. can't do that yeah you're there right are allies he can't do that you're right seoul's too close to the board well too pyongyang close. though is far enough up that you could hit it with a new because our our nuclear devices today somebody uh, here the other night, I think, said hydrogen bomb. I heard somebody on the air today talking about hydrogen bombs. Uh, we don't really make those bombs anymore. We make low-yield nuclear devices. That's really what we, what we do so that we can pinpoint an area that would get a nuclear blast. How but about a neutron but, bomb? Huh? Neutron. Well, tell us what a neutron bomb is. It's one that uh, destroys the populace but not the buildings and, and so forth, right? No, I thought they were no, no. neutron is uh, simply a, a form of fission uh, more than anything else. We, what you're thinking about is, I'm trying to remember what it's called. EMP? Yeah, yeah, calls. yeah. Uh, uh, I wanted to say something to what Scott had said uh, about the underground tests. I thought that That's the other Scott, Scott. I just wanted you to know. Scott. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Scott Morgan. Yeah. Uh, now he had he had talked about uh, underground tests and that uh, that uh, Un has the right to do whatever he wants to do within his country. But I thought that there was a nuclear proliferation treaty uh, that was signed by all the nuclear powers, uh, uh, present nu nuclear powers, and that they d and they outlawed underground testing. I don't uh, think he signed it. He didn't sign it. No, he didn't sign it. But that's going to get the ire of the rest no, of the world. No, that's not to begin with. To begin no. with. It's an underground test. How do you know he even did it? Oh, they have ways of telling uh, with geological like equipment. Like seismic? Seismic. Seismic. Yeah. Seismic. yeah. yeah. He, well, he could but say... The thing is, yeah, Phil raises the point, or, you know, he can do it. And the question is, and this is why, you know, to Phil's statement earlier that, you know, he's been doing this all along and no one's ever challenged him and no one's ever told him no. No, they have. They've been letting this drag on because he's never gotten to the point that he's had a deliverable capability, and now he's gotten to it. And that's why all the previous presidents aren't wrong in their approach. It was diplomacy. It was sanctions. It was, let's see what we could do to stop this ahead of time. We don't need the hell that's going to be unleashed by us trying to attack them, refugees into China, them attacking South Korea, a whole lot of people dead. Well, now the situation's changed a little bit that apparently he's gotten to the point that he's miniaturized these things and his missile technology has gotten at least arguably somewhat to the point of getting them off his own peninsula before they blow up in his face. Um, now they're kind of pushing the point of now we have to do something about this or we should consider it. My problem is Trump, if, I like Mattis a lot. I don't think Trump is the one that's willing to work the diplomacy first and the shitstorm second. I think he's going to go out and basically, you know, say, hey, let's, you know, be John Wayne on this thing to quote someone else's approach uh, that they mentioned the other day. And, but it's getting to the point where, uh, okay, you have them, 
now what are you going to do with these things? Are you going to keep them for your own defense? Or are you going to say, hey, we've just got real chummy with Iran, and I have nothing against the Persians or Iran. The Saudis have proven to be just as a horrible people when it comes to killing others as Iran Iranians are, Persians are. But, you know, they ha at some point, if, if they're going to have them, we have to bring them into the fold somehow. And I don't envy anyone at the War College trying to figure out how to negotiate this whole or navigate this whole water of rocks and rapids because, man, it ain't easy. I sure as hell think a preemptive strike is not the way to do it. Do you think UN will sell those uh, uh, warheads to the Iranians uh, if, because he needs money, he needs funds? The Iranians certainly aren't going to honor our uh, uh, our. Um, well, so uh, far, so far, the, so far they have. Yeah, so far they have. I don't think it's our been blockade. Uh, they have no reason to honor our our blockade of uh, of North Korea uh, economically. All, all I'm saying is you're you're you know you're throwing you're throwing out some just stupid notions. Oh, they're going to sell their bombs to uh, to Iran. They need money. Uh, 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 yeah, but Iran uh, they said uh, have made a deal that they're not going to have a nuclear device. They said they weren't going to develop them. Okay, that so mean they can't uh, buy it. Well, they could go buy them from Afghanistan. Well, uh, per, uh, Pakistan, you mean? Excuse right. me, Pakistan. They, or they, India. Or India. But okay. Pakistan may sell them, but India certainly wouldn't uh, sell them to the uh, uh, to the North Koreans. How about uh, how about uh, you know the Russians? They might sell them to Iran. Yeah, uh, Iran's got a lot of people. Japan, Iran's got a lot of places they can buy them before they get this. You know, a nuclear device that Kim Jong Un put together with Woolworth's gaffers tape. Uh, you know, uh, he can get more professional bombs. They can get more professional bombs if they wanted to. Yeah, I, I okay. just don't see the Russians uh, or the Chinese or Listen, the Indians. I think violent. I think I agree with Scott. I think that the and not Scott Morgan, but Scott Boddicker, that I think the more people that have a nuclear device, the better. Because yeah, so far, moronic. so far, what? How's it moronic? How many people? How, come how many countries? How come, it's not, how, how, many, how come it's not moronic to have everybody have a gun? Yeah, as, uh, yeah, Phil. Answer for me. Come on. Be, that, that's no. not something that will destroy the world. Well, that's but, something that uh, will. But everybody well, having a gun equalizes it, and nobody fires them, right? Well, what I'm saying is, yeah. is that well, that, there the, you go. The fact is that we have over the last. Uh, how many years now since the the first bomb was dropped? Um, seventy. Uh, seventy years. Uh, nobody else has dropped a bomb on a human population but us, and the reason is people saw the kind of devastation it could have. But everybody went out and bought one. I mean, y y <laughs> y you know, and 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 has one in their uh, in their safe, so to speak. Um, what, what Trump said was, today. Will you let me finish my thought, Phil? Gee. Do you mind? Go ahead, Phil. Whatever. I can't remember what I was saying now. You know, I'm the only one that you yell at like that. Well, no, because you, you're the only one that interrupts you, me when I'm me, talking. You're the only one that interrupts me when I'm talking. If you, a conversation's two ways, you interrupt me, you know, and I don't mean to interrupt you. It just seems like it's a conversation no, it only two like, ways. It, it's, it and, seems like when I'm in the middle of a thought, you interrupt. Yeah. You don't let me finish the thought and then say what you have to say. All right. Is that so wrong? So you remember your thought? No, I don't remember it now. Well, I don't I'm, remember. I, I, I'm, 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 you, I'm 77 so years old, and I, and I forget these things really fast unless I get them uh -huh. out fast enough. Well, I used to be able to speak through a little speaker that went to your earphones and, and give you the information, but uh, not on this thing. What? What? Well, from the, uh, from the uh, other studio. Oh, I see, uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, I could flip a button and... Well, listen, talk. I used to have a problem when people would be talking in my ear like directors and stuff while yeah. I was trying to do something because that, that, I never could do both at the same time. So eventually they learn not to talk while... Because it drives you nuts. You're trying to get yeah. out of coherent thought and somebody's saying something. Now, I, I, I apologize to you, Phil, this far, that because of the uh, how, how Skype is built, it perhaps many times... You don't hear me talking because you start talking and you think I've stopped talking. That's a possibility. I'm, yeah. I always look for your body language 
uh, you know, but yeah, I can miss it. But now I forgot but, what I was saying. Uh, Tim, do you remember what I was saying? Yeah, we were talking about it, we should have more countries with oh, oh, uh, the, nuclear capabilities. Yeah, yeah. And I got an answer for but, you. No, what, what I'm what, saying is, is that that in all that time, no, a lot of people have the bomb. A lot of people have nuclear devices, uh, but yet none of them have ever used them because they know how dangerous they are, and nobody uses them because they know that if they use them, other people are going to then use them on them, and it's going to be this cataclysm. And uh, I, uh, th that's, you know, that's why I think that everybody should have the bomb. We should go give Iran a bomb. We, we should give, we have, we should give Brooklyn a bomb for crying out loud. You know, you know what's changed, though, in the world? What's changed is we have very powerful, very highly technical-abled uh, non-state actors like ISIS. And the, the, more they, the, the more we proliferate, the more that someday they're going to get their hands on some of that stuff Even and the, use it, and they it, don't care using it. Well, I, you know, uh, I think they would care. I think that they know what the consequences are of using it because the first person who's going to use it who doesn't have a real a decent retaliatory, a retaliatory force <laughs> Uh, is is going to have a b big problem with a lot of bombs coming their way. Yeah, and, but if it's ISIS, they, there's no land. There, it's just an ideology. They, they want to go to heaven. They, they just want to do yeah, what they the Bible tells They want to get their 72 virgins. Yeah, they're willing to die for their cause. And uh, and life in this world doesn't seem to mean too much. It, so it, It's just like trying to fight kamikazes. It was very hard to fight kamikazes because right. they didn't care about their own lives. So we get to, and we got lots of them out there. They're, you know, they're pretty highly, you know, bombing the airliners and everything. That you know, that opened up Pandora's box. There. Well, you know, I mean, uh, isn't it? Isn't it? Doesn't say something about us that we don't care enough about ourselves that we would have that kind of? How many Americans would give their own life for the the? Just, you know, just John McCain. Just John McCain. Yeah, no, but, uh, as, as far as congressmen and senators, I, I don't know that anybody anybody here was willing to give their life. No, nobody here, except for me, was in the service, in the military service. Hey, yeah. so how, how? What does everybody think about Prince Eric Prince's uh, uh, idea? Who's Eric Prince? He's, He's the, the brother uh, uh, of uh, Be Betsy DeVos, who runs the Department of Education. Yeah, he uh, was with Blackwater. Black He's got his own company now. He wants to go in and get a contract to run things in Afghanistan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he says he can do for a better mercenaries. for less money. <clears throat> no. No, they'll get more money. They uh, pay their people a lot more than our soldiers get paid. Yeah, but I think he can do it with less people. Well, there's several instances where they ended up paying a lot more to the contractors, and then you have the problem of them not following our military Protocol. manuals as far as Ethics and so so we're privatizing our military now. Yeah, yeah we've been doing that for years. Is, uh, Eric Prince's uh, pr pr proposition. Because they don't have an allegiance to anything other than a paycheck, so they're going to do it. That, they're they're going to do. It's going to be down and dirty if they run things. Right. Isn't that wrong. typical Trump running the country like a business? We'll outsource it. It gets us an exit strategy for Afghanistan. I, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know, really. Uh, well, yeah. Don Donald Trump's going to run it like a business. What he's going to do eventually in order for us to equalize the budget and the inflow and the outflow is he's going to burn the country to the ground for the insurance money. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was going to say c claim it bankrupt and shut it down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. Just turn it into a casino. We'll just yeah. Oh, well, then no, no. The, the not, don't let Trump turn it into a casino because it's bound <laughs> to fail. <laughs> that, that's, well, that's the whole thing. That he, that's a fallacy that he hires good people. He does not hire good managers. He wouldn't have so many bankrupts. He's a bad businessman. He's a terrible uh, yeah, businessman. Yeah, he is. He's very bad. What happened in uh, Atlantic City, uh, you know, between uh, the hurricanes and, uh, and, and, and also the competition yeah. from Indian casinos really devastated that area. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Poor yeah. yeah. babies. Poor babies. Poor Still, babies. Um, this is a guy who, at the time, uh, was losing money on a casino uh, where you should be making money because it's a, it's a, it's a uh, uh, an excuse to print money, money. laundering. Yeah, yeah, it's money laundering too. Yeah, which I'm sure yeah, well, he that, had his that's share. That's the thing is, and I, I don't have the specifics, but apparently, he never ran the casinos to make money and succeed. 
and I hate to say this because this is all hearsay and, and second speak. I don't have the facts in front of me. But he would buy them and then do things such as make his own casinos buy bottled water at twice the cost of what they could buy it elsewhere with the whole idea that, yeah, they would go down. And that was the whole point of the operation. Well, there was, one, there, was, there, was, there was one other thing, Scott, and you may remember this, is that he lost enough money on that casino that the United States of America forgave him his taxes for something like 18 or 19 years. Yep. Uh, and, and he didn't and, actually take the loss. No, to, no, I was about ready to. Say, I was about ready to say that, Tim. He didn't take the loss. His investors did, and yet he took that off his taxes. Yeah, and that's the whole thing that when we talk about Trump, and yeah, you know, I really enjoyed your conversation the other day about everyone has to say something good about Trump because I sat at my desk at work and said, "Gee, what would I say?" If well, I well what would you have said since you were? What would you say? <laughs> what would I have said? Um, and I sat I, thinking about it. I think that maybe not Trump, but I think the Republicans have there. There are problems in middle America that the Democrats are not addressing. Mm -hmm. And it's maybe a philosophical issue. Maybe it's a tactical issue. But the fact of the matter is we have bone crushing poverty in the red states. And I don't see the Democrats as addressing that now maybe no. it's just because uh, trump came in on the republicans and they're red and they're going to listen to them or what but there has to be a focus on okay there's problems out here and just because wall street's doing good and just because the coastal citadels are doing fantastic the middle america is hurting we've got to turn the focus and i think that's how he won the elections you got all these middle countries you know to turn from right. purple but red. he lied to them he lied to them I don't disagree with you there, um, yeah. but but I that's, agree. that's why I was going to vote for him for a while because I agree with some of that stuff, right? Yeah, and I agree. And he came in, and, and one of the things he they said today that uh, he, he is angry at Mitch McConnell because of one Obamacare yawn, but the Affordable Care Act does have things that maybe need, need to be addressed, not repeal and replace necessarily, but we've got to work on it. And you know, the Republicans just want to you know don't want to even. Be, negotiate with the Democrats, they just want to do it their way. Uh, you know, uh, Trump's trashing it now. He's cut off their uh, advertising money. He's cut yeah, back I mean, right. I mean, he's not doing it right, but he's right and we have to address it, but he's doing it Well, I think there's something, something um, uh, almost criminal about trying to bankrupt Obamacare because you don't well, want it, it to it's happen. It is playing with people's lives. It's yeah. doing it on its own. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Bill. You know, premiums were being stabilized until Trump started all this other crap and the Republicans, <laughs> and now the premiums are going to jump way out because there's so much uncertainty because of the stupid games they've been playing. And, and that's the reason why all those uh, insurance companies got out of some of those states is because they saw the writing on the wall and that if Trump has his way, uh, they, they, they were going to be in bad shape. So they just got out. Just give everybody Medicare. I mean, it's so simple. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, single but, payer is ultimately but, the best way to go, but... Or, or give them the choice of Medicare. You but, know, Scott, we, we, Scott, I, I, you started saying something good about Donald Trump. I don't think he ever got there. No, yeah. but no, I think he's got... And then the other thing he said today was uh, I, uh, infrastructure. We got to... Well, what, what, what I think is good is he, he's touching on... And maybe it's not him. Maybe it's the party platform that, hey, the red states, the middle America, the industries are leaving. We've got to somehow yeah. stop the hemorrhaging. We've got to get some businesses back here. People should be able to not have to go get a four year degree plus professional degree to raise a family and have dignity. And I think that's kind of gone when all of these CEOs of these major corporations said, hey, we can outsource this crap to India and, you know, save ourselves and give us gives ourselves some stock bonuses. Many of them are probably the same donate, donors to the, the Democrats as they are to the Republicans as well. Oh, Democrats yeah, yeah. are like hubris. Right. That's right. Hey, uh, I looked in uh, why why did Trump's casinos fail? And I guess they were having a, uh, a labor issue, uh, and uh, the uh, labor went on strike. Uh, also, the uh, declining uh, uh, the decline of Atlantic City as a resort in gaming, but uh, the hotel lost over 350 million in just a few short years. A thousand employees uh, went on strike, and they were going to lose an additional hundred million over the next uh, year. Why did they go on strike? 
Uh, they wanted more money. They said that their union hasn't gotten more money in 12 years, and they struck against Trump's hotel. Well, they, but he was, Trump was getting kickbacks. So that loss is a bogus one because he siphoned a bunch of money off to make it look like a loss. The guy's look, not his, dumb. His, his hotel was there for three years. They're talking that it's been twelve over a 12-year period. They only got 80, 80 cents an hour in raises. And uh, so and and when they went on strike, they struck they struck Trump's hotel. They didn't strike every hotel. They struck Trump's hotel. And he closed. Well, he could they, afford to pay him well, more. Well, he was charging himself the, twice for the water. Did they, but you don't mention whether they came to an accommodation with those other hotels or not. Uh, you also don't mention the sources of your information either. So let's you know, uh, put that the out there. Too. Source of my information is USA Today. Was it in color? Uh, is it in color? It, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's actually. Yeah. Yeah. They have a graph next to it with all the, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And finally, the other thing that, that Trump said that I agree with was uh, infrastructure. But the thing is, is the Democrats have also saying, you know, Obama said we have shovel ready projects. Let's get our infrastructure going. And so I, I think no, Trump I, gets a bad I, I, when I heard him he, when I heard him talking about infrastructure today, as a matter of fact, I thought at least that's one thing he's got that he wants to do that is a, is a real positive thing. You know, he I said can't, the I have, Democrats would work with him. The Democrats will work with them. There isn't a politician that wouldn't work with them because the money's coming back to their states in the form of jobs and everything else. And in the meantime, you know, you don't take your life in your hands when you're traveling across a bridge and hope that it doesn't fall apart as you're traveling across it. Uh, but you I mean, know what was part of his plan, though? Tax write-offs for a lot of these big construction companies. So they were going to be paying off the corporations, too. It wasn't just going to be infrastructure. And the Democrats were leery because a lot of this money was going to go to the corporations and not necessarily into the ground. So you know, when corporations have tax write-offs, oftentimes what that means is that they can invest more into hiring and I'm, into I'm talking projects. about overboard tax write I don't talk about reasonable ones. I'm talking about over over overboards. Where do you where do you That's get the, the statistic that it's overboard? On. Where where do, where overboard do you overboard when it's way too high. Just like the jobs they brought to Wisconsin is 230,000 a piece. Uh, 230 is it 230,000 per job that they got yeah from Apple. Yeah, but I heard they're not going to break even for they a long time thing. let me let me and now they're going to only get half yeah. as many so it's going to be a half a million do dollars for each job we put there let me bring somebody into this equation uh, Kevin are you there Kevin or are you asleep uh, Kevin is he awake no, oh he's awake he's yeah awake. I'm here yeah yeah uh, I I no, I just want to know what you think about all this like what what kind of work do you do it, but you know what line of work are you in, Kevin? Yeah. You... I was in uh, hazardous materials shipping. Yeah. So so infrastructure that would sort be of thing. hazardous materials. Infrastructure would have been important to you, right? Yeah. You know. The... Yeah, because it's uh, all transportation. Yeah. So I mean, roads and bridges and things like that. You're breaking. Up. So, uh, uh, I'm breaking up. Yep. No, uh, not no, you're it, not. Uh, probably it's a, maybe a problem. Yeah, on I'm, getting, I'm getting another bad signal, I think. Yeah. Well, just hang, just stick with us anyway. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, 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 infrastructure. Yeah. Infrastructure. I think, you know, I mean, when he talks about something like that, I go, okay, now you're, you're on the right track. I mean, if he's going to use it as some kind of facade for getting money to rich people and, and not getting anything really built, but make it look like it's happening. Um, that I don't agree with, you know. Um, I wouldn't brag too much like he did today about uh, about Foxconn going into Wisconsin because uh, I'll, you know, uh, don't hold your breath. They've been known to do this before, where they said they were going to bring uh, jobs into an area and they were going to do it, and I think in Philadelphia, and they never built the plant, you know. So, but uh, but the, but the infrastructure, yeah. if he if he were to do it. Uh, I I give him I give him that you know I'd say okay good going. Hey, remember the Chinese guy, his friend who was going to bring all those jobs, that fell through completely. Oh it was really? All a joke. It was a Chinese guy who was going to invest fifty billion dollars or five hundred billion dollars in jobs. What do you in mean United a States? joke? What do you mean was, it's all a, a joke? It, it, it never happened. Dolly Baba. Yeah, no, I don't think it was Ali Baba. It was one of those guys like that, and that was just all. It was just all fanfare. Yeah, and, and the other thing you can tell that what he's going to do or not going to do, 
he day on day one he should have negotiated with the pharmaceutical companies, the hospitals, and the insurance companies, and get some decent prices for this for the Americans in this country that are dying and can't afford medicine. He did not do that. He's never said he's going to do it now that he's in office. So don't tr- I don't trust him on anything. Well, yeah, but I think there, I, didn't we pass a law or something saying we at least that Medicare can't negotiate with the, the Medicare uh, Part D? Yes, I worked yeah. for Social Security at the time, and that was the biggest scam. That's that's what the infrastructure is going to look like. It's going to not. It's going to be a half-assed plan for the public, and then it's going to be a uh, you know a, 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 a feeding trough for all the big corporations. Tim, that was the plan under Bush. That that wasn't. I know different. it was under Bush. It was under Republicans. Yeah. On the Republican, and, and, they're Bush, not on the. He should have fixed that by now, or he was going to. He's such a negotiator. That's because he's not. He can't even negotiate with his own party. Uh, you he know, has to, his, he his has own to party. Him. His own party is uh, is sitting on their laurels, and they're not doing anything. Uh, you know, uh, he he just called him on the carpet, and I, I think it's great that he said to McConnell. Well, I think some of that's I think some of that's needed. Well, to begin, uh, let yeah, me I, let, I, I agree let me with some of that. Yeah, but, but but he never tried to get uh, he, he never tried to get the repeal passed. He never worked. He never he never went Obama. out. And, you're right, Tim. He never went and worked for this. He never went out like Obama when Obama had how many town hall meetings? Exactly. For Obamacare and and it was like Trump didn't even know what was in. The health Trump's bill. not a detail guy. He's just trying to be the the figurehead. Yeah. Put it on my desk. So, I'll sign so he it. didn't do he anything is. to help McConnell, and then McConnell's out yeah. there uh, really trying to ramrod whatever he could get through uh, by hook or crook, and he couldn't get it rammed through because by one well, vote, if McC- have, McCain. If you have a briefing for Trump and you don't have pictures or video, he won't even pay attention. Yeah. He won't read more than one page. Yeah. Yeah. So I think the you irritating gotta be thing about genius to run this country. You got to what? The irritating thing about to be partly a genius like Obama and Clinton were. Wow. They knew what well, they wait, they could handle several subjects during the day and somebody remember was tra- what's going on. Somebody was trying to say something here. Scott was Scott yeah. Morgan. I'm sorry, I should have raised my hand. No, the ir- irritating thing is, and I think it happened under Clinton, maybe Bush Senior. When did? the president go from being the head of the executive branch to the head of the the cheerleader for the whole frickin' party that's running it. Trump is the head of the executive branch. Mitch McConnell, Paul Ryan should give him the finger and saying, hey, we're the frickin' legislative branch. There's a check and balance here. Go pound sand. This is how we do things here. We will work the bills out. We will listen to our constituents. We will vote on things. And we'll hand them to you, and you can put it on your dossier whether you want to sign it or not. Well, We're not taking yeah. orders from you. You're not the head of the party. You're the freaking president. You do your job. We'll do ours. Good night. And just hang up the phone or drop the mic after that. Did Ryan say that? Did he? I don't know. But, I mean, well, uh, so a lot of people today on the, on the talk shows and everything, because I'm not watching them again. I hate them. And I, yeah. I, I but, you for that. They're, they're afraid of being primary. But wait a minute. Wait, wait a minute. Hold, hold on a second, uh, uh, Tim. Uh, they were all saying that the stupidest thing he's done, perhaps in his whole uh, time in office with his tweets and so on, was going after Mitch McConnell. Because this is the very guy who, if he's mad enough at Trump, Trump isn't going to get anything done while he's in office. Nothing. Zero. Zilch. And he's pissing off the Republican Party. He's p- pissing off the Senate and the Congress and getting them very sure. mad at him. Yes, Good. Uh, right. yes, Tony. I have a question. Yeah. We voted We voted the president in, you know, even though we didn't vote for Trump. Why, you know, and why, why can't they incorporate this to government? Why don't they have, this may sound crazy, but let's say the main issue, one of the main issues is health care. Yeah. They can't get it right for a long time. Why don't they? Why don't they let the American people vote? Would you like universal health care, or would you like private health care? And let the people decide. If we vote for it, then they have to go in there and do their job and get it done. Well, here's the funny part about the American public: they would vote down Obamacare, but they would go along with the Affordable Care Act. That's the problem. Yeah, it's how you it's how you phrase it, and then all the people. You know, if we said nobody has to do any politicking on this, just let the American public decide, and then you just let said, us decide. you know, um, 
Yeah. And then they got to go in there and get the job done. They don't give us an outline. Do something. So the difference is you listen to what these people say they want to do, and then you vote for them because – uh, that's your voice to if you want to repeal and replace Obamacare, you vote for the, Trump. If you wanted to fix Obamacare, you'd have voted for Hillary Clinton, right? Exactly. That it was basically the same thing. That's well, okay. I, it's a I would take it away from government. that and take it a step further. Though. Have a separate. What were you saying? Process. What were you saying? Elected. What were you saying, Brian? I said that's what, by definition, would be what constitutes what this country is not a democracy but mostly a uh, Republican government. It's a republic. But there are democratic tendencies, considering the fact that uh, if it were strictly a republic, you know, Colorado would never have had legalized weed. You know, I welcome anybody who wants to come along and um, fix Obamacare, fix the con yeah. concept of Obamacare. Yeah, it's not perfect. But unfortunately, it. Obama took what he could get. Obama wasn't about ready to give us what we should have, which is either single payer or something along that no, line. thanks to people like Rahm Emanuel, by the way. Absolutely. Right. Yep. But I mean, I'm saying all I'm saying is that that uh, it, it it was kind of terrible that he had to make this what can we call it this uh, acquiesce so that he could get it just passed something it's passed. Such. Because the Democrats like them need Republicans. And, it, and if Amy Manuel is listening, I, I'm uh, assuming she's uh, her head is spinning and she's bashing her head against the wall hearing me say that. Talk like that. Say what? It's the truth. Say what? With Democrats like Rahm Emanuel and even uh, 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 oh, Nancy Pelosi, but also uh, Feinstein, who yeah. needs Republicans? Yeah. 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 So, so Senator Ron John. Ron Johnson was on New Day this morning on CNN, and he said it straight out. He said, you know, we're going to do this bipartisan, uh, you know, the, the whole thing about McCain. He apologized. He walked back the comments, and then he said, we're ready to talk with the Democrats, and we are getting together, and I've got a plan, and we're going to hash it out. And they, they actually worked it out to say, well, then he said, well, I was already, uh, always for fixing the Affordable Care Act. So you're hearing that kind of talk now. So Well, because they're going to have to go back to their constituency and say right. why they fucked the whole thing up and, and why they were coming close to just divesting everybody from any kind of health care. Which would you be know. ridiculous. Yes. Pass something just for the sake of signing a bill. You know something? If all these guys went into the, into the Senate and, and the House and they passed a bill that really took care of the American public's health problems without having to, people having to pay large insurance premiums and so on. They would be such heroes, they'd get reelected year after year after year after year. But they're oh, not be doing parades. it. <laughs> there'd be parades in their honor. But instead, what's going to happen is, is this total destruction of Obamacare because of lack of care, all right, because the president is trying to sabotage it. And they're going to have to go back to those constituents who are nickel and diming it in order to get health care and, and answer to them. And they're not going to get reelected, you know. So, I mean, the Republicans are in, a, in bad shape right now because they got to go back and answer the questions. But, but we also got to get corporate money out of the campaign. They well, said this the, isn't going to work until you get that money out. They said the Republicans were in bad shape prior to the, uh, this last election. And, uh, you know, uh, so well, they could, keep the well, polls yeah. keep saying that the Republicans are in bad shape, but we couldn't believe okay. the polls. I, I, I agree that they're in bad shape. Follow me on this, Phil. All right. Uh, it wasn't the Republicans that got elected in, in, in uh, November. It was Trump. OK, uh, he if you said he was a Republican, he was a Republican because that was the part on the ballot where he, his name was. But. When was he ever a staunch Republican? When did he go out politicking for Republicans? He was a Republican did not get elected. Donald Trump got elected. Right. And the Congress and, and the yep. Republicans are still in the same bad shape they were in before. Well, he got elected to uh, for the people that voted for him. They wanted him to clean the swamp. And unfortunately for the Republicans, they're just as much swamp monsters as the Democrats. And, you know how he's seen in a, in a swamp, yep. Phil, with the Voter Suppression Commission 
which is an absolute travesty in my book. They have to suppress the vote to continue winning. Well, and I don't gerrymandering think... and voter yeah. suppression is We've the only had... way they won. We've had that for years. Uh, no, and that's, not, doesn't not, make it it's right. It's more extreme now. It's but that doesn't now. excuse the behavior. It doesn't excuse and, the practice. You know, if it wasn't for gerrymandering, I mean, California, no, obviously. No, but now, now they're using computer matching and, and disqualifying all kinds of legally registered voters. And a lot of this, I, the cross-match, the interstate cross-match that was done. Look up Greg Palas. He's been doing a lot of research on that. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot of people that were disqualified from voting who legally should have been able to vote. And obviously. they're just going to make it worse. What was it, three million or five million that uh, Trump? What, what was it, Indiana, where they they made it, they they did away with early voting in this in the rural areas, but they allowed early voting in the or in Indianapolis or vice versa. Who you know, they just do everything they can to keep people from voting. Who, wh they know which, they're candidate, lose. which candidate took Indiana? Was it Trump or Hillary? I I, I think it was. I think Trump. it was. Trump. I think I think Trump. it was. I think it because was of Trump. Pence. Pence was the governor of Indiana. Oh, okay, yeah. Um, they don't like. They didn't like Pence. Indiana, he, uh, wouldn't, but, he wouldn't have got elected governor again in Indiana. He couldn't I guess get elected governor, right? liked them that, you know, it went red for Trump and Pence. Well, yeah. And you know Pence is going to run next time because he knows Trump is, is doomed. That's why he's the first vice president to have a pack this early on. He's a, I, he realizes that Trump mother. isn't going to run uh, next time and may not be around to run next time. Uh, and he may have to fill Trump's position, so you know it just it makes sense for well, him Trump, to Trump, uh, Trump, ready to yeah, do it. Trump's in what I call the death. But trough. today he, he mentioned during that conference that he was going to be there for another eight years, and we'll see what the next eight years brings. He didn't mention four years. Well, no, of course not. He's being optimistic, but uh, yeah. he, be realistic. And uh, you know, I just don't, I just don't see it happening. I don't see him getting reelected, even if he did run. Uh, you know, because, uh, you know, there there are polls that show his popularity has sunk pretty low. And unless he does something uh, it's 35 uh, it's, it's 35% or did I see it was up to 80, uh, 38. I thought it was 33. But, but it, it's higher than Congress. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they were at like 13. Yeah. It always will be, I would argue. But he's been in That's the 30s. He, he, he's been in the 30s for most of his uh, 200 days. Yeah. yeah. But you, Alex, you were talking about the inconsistencies of the American voter in response, in contrary response to what uh, Anthony Magno had pointed out earlier. Regarding uh, um, um, uh, this um, congressional approval rating, it's one thing that it's in the single digits or that it's 10 or 11 percent. But then you've got when you ask a bunch of qualifying questions, you eventually get to the point where you have the people who are participating in the survey saying, well, Every other congressman and every other senator is bad, but mine is a-okay because yeah. he or she well, brings actually, home the bacon. Actually, the statistic I saw today was actually a bunch of Republicans that were polled. This was not uh, Democrats. And uh, they, they gave 38% to Trump and something like, I don't know, 20% or 15% to, to, to their people in Congress. Just Republicans. Just what Republicans. For that? Yeah. Uh, I can't. I can't remember. I saw it at some point today, and I can't remember where I saw it now. That's a little surprising, considering yeah. it's just Republicans that are giving him that low. Well, you know, look, rating. look. I, you know, I get a little sick of all these polls, so. So. Uh, you know, because. Which is why I've been listening to audiobooks and you know doing other shit. And it's just, you, this wait, is no, why. You, 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 you who hires pollsters? Because who who hires pollsters? Uh, Zuckerberg just hired some pollsters and some other experts he may be considering because he's done with facebook now yeah. he should be it can run on its own oh. is he old enough is he 35 he's rich enough because he's he's rich as bezos right? no yeah. no he's is not he, no he's not as rich as bezos close no be, no not even close Bezos and Bezos and Gates are 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 fighting it out neck and necks for, for number one. Oh, okay, but he has enough money to run for president. I think. Yeah, I mean Gates did it with a incredibly profitable company, and uh, Bezos did it without his company being profitable at all. That's that's the interesting part. You know what's speculation. Funny? He got it on speculation. Yeah. What 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 Tony? I just ordered Coco's dog food on Amazon just a second ago. Oh, really? 
Yep, it goes right to my house. I get a little low and it boom, it comes right. You know, G, you know, I got one of those echoes, you know? Yeah. And, and you know what the easiest thing is to do with Echo? Order from Amazon. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've got a friend that's getting a triple bypass today. And uh, and they're putting uh, an Echo in? No, Amazon's doing it? But uh, this, this friend used to complain that he was out of breath, going up the stairs, getting the dog food from the garage and so forth. And I, and I told him, I said, why don't you just order from Amazon? They'll leave it at your front door. You wouldn't, you know, you wouldn't even have to go up the stairs. And, you know, Amazon is, uh, is you know, I hate to say it, uh, what they're doing to brick and mortar, but now they're starting to become more brick and mortar. Uh, they're, they're a fantastic company. Well, yeah. I don't know. Kmart store this yeah. month. Yeah. It closed. When they, but uh, so I, I think, now. I think the, 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 the Achilles heel for Amazon may be going into brick and mortar. I noticed that they... For instance, yeah. I they opened up a brick and mortar bookstore here in Manhattan, mm -hmm. uh, and and of course they now own all the Whole Foods. Now, if they take those Whole Foods and make them delivery places for the food they sell online, then you know they may have something good going there. And I think that's why they did it because he then now has all these different places cool. that you can cool. order. Vertical from. integration. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yes. I think they're going to partner with Sears too. Yeah, uh, uh, Brian. Sears, needed, Brian. Sears needs the salvation. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, Brian. But uh, it dovetails on what I what I've thought about for a, quite a long time, of uh, you know Amazon endorsed or somehow co-sponsored. Maybe not just Amazon.com, but other brick and mortar and non brick and mortar e retail and retail stores like Walmart that have a strong online presence, where you know people can be uh, independent quasi independent contractors that hold another customer stuff or other customer stuff in their house or in something and you know the customer co comes and picks it up kind of like uber fi this yeah. kind of whole thing well, they, we, we have an ebay store they don't have to worry about by, by the way there's something that i that i saw on uh, cbs sunday morning last a couple of weeks ago and i found it fascinating uh you know how you go to costco and if you bought something three years ago and you say it's br it broke and they give you the, your money back, so, or, mm -hmm. and you can go buy another one if you want it. Uh, and and no questions asked. Amazon, you want to send something back? No questions asked. This right. is not uncommon now in business. That most uh, businesses have, a, have 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 adopted this model because they find that it's actually more profitable for them. Right. Because Nordstrom, yeah, it's it's advertising. well, Nordstrom is it Nordstrom? Yeah, Nordstrom. Yeah has the legendary story where one of their stores used to be before it was a Nordstrom store was tire it was a tire store and somebody brought their tires back mm -hmm. uh, years later after they had bought them and right. uh, and 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 they actually gave them their money back even though they weren't the tire <laughs> store <laughs> anymore hey Phil yeah can I take my carpet back yes yeah, yeah. yeah. up to I have up to 120 days, no questions asked. If we put it in and you don't like it for any reason, no questions asked, we'll replace it, including labor. Uh, and well, I don't think he's like a good salesman, right? Like, I want to buy something. <laughs> hey, Phil, do you, do you and you how often, let me just ask you for, for let me, Miller, let, let me ask general, you for grins. It, There's me, something down there. Uh, there's a Miller's Carpet one in Seaside, I think. But uh, I, I belong to what's called a co-op. And uh, a co-op is is a structure that can uh, really help the small independent uh, compete. Okay, we don't we don't have enough time for a lecture on that. I'm sorry, and because it, I would be interested. But let's see, the co-op structure is something that's uh, that, that's going to become much more important yeah. uh, to, uh, in no, the but future. I, I, but the question I wanted to ask you was: How many people yeah. have taken you up on your offer? Two or three. In all, in, in how many in how many years? Uh, we instituted it about three years ago. Yeah. How does so, that hurt you? Does it get you in? You know, the manufacturer. Well, we negotiated with the manufacturers, and the manufacturers pay for the labor, and uh, our co-op uh, created an insurance policy. Okay. I mean, the manufacturers pay, pay for the materials, and it's good and, for business. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's great for business. Great advertising. Yeah, it's, it's called our beautiful guarantee, and uh, we honor it with without question. 
But this is becoming actually a way of doing business today. They've just found yep. that the amount of people that return stuff is negligible compared to the goodwill you get and also the assurity that people have when they buy something from you that they're not stuck with it. You know? Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Now, we knew this back in 1934 when Macy's told people to go to Gimbel's, right? Yeah. <laughs> but but nobody know, ever took the lesson. Yeah. You know, we have uh, you know, uh, warranties that uh, go from 30 days to 120 days, depending on which uh, level warranty uh, went with their particular product. Mm. Hey, listen, there's our theme song. Uh, oh. Scott Morgan, please call us more often. You're really good. You know, <laughs> you're really good. Uh, and please call more. Uh, and uh, Mike, good talking to you. Uh, I know I give you yeah. a bad time, Phil, but you are appreciated on this program. Okay, yeah. so please ah! don't mind it. I just get short occasionally when I'm stopped in mid sentence and then can't remember what I was saying. But that's the trouble with old age. Uh, so and let me apologize what? if Except in any way you felt bad about it. But I think you take it in its stride. So thank you. Uh, I just you know. And Rob. Always a pleasure. You're terrific. Uh, Tony, every now and then you say just the right thing. Scott, you've been quiet tonight, but when you piped up, you have been important to the program. Uh, Kevin, love having you here. Of course, Brian, our special child. <laughs> what can I say? And, of course, Tim. Everybody, wave good night to everybody. We'll see you again uh, tomorrow, hopefully. Okay. Bye -bye. The hell with the Republicans. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it for tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Let me just do a few things here. I, I'm, you know, I, I switch this thing. I do the whole TV and the audio thing, and you know, uh, and I'm just uh, well. Anyway, I uh, I want to say stay tuned next for Jack and Amy here with the uh, intersection, and then at uh, one o'clock Eastern Daylight Time, it's Connections. Uh, we'll see you again tomorrow night. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Okay.